I now call to order the meeting of the, I'm sorry, the August 4th, 2021 meeting of the Monroe County Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, I'm gonna take roll. Yes, uh, Mary Clemens, Brady Garitas, Skip Daly. Present. Mary Beth Marchek. Here. Vicki Sorensen. Here. We have three members in a quorum. And Bernie, I know Bernie's arrival. Hello. Bernie has arrived virtually. I just took attendance, Bernie, and I will note you in attendance. Okay, introduction of evidence. I request that the following items be introduced into evidence for tonight's meeting. Real County Comprehensive Plan is adopted and amended. Real County Zoning Ordinance has adopted and amended. The uh, Royal County Subdivision Ordinance is adopted and amended. The rules of procedure of the Board of Zoning Appeals and the cases advertised and docketed for hearing on tonight's agenda. I move that we accept the introduction of evidence. Second. Yeah, I will call the roll on the introduction of evidence. Uh, Rudy Garitas. Yes. Skip Daly. Yay. Mary Beth Skismarchuk. Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Uh, the introduction of evidence is approved by a four to zero vote. Okay. I move that we approve tonight's agenda as written, unless there are any changes that we need to discuss. Uh, I believe we need to go ahead and approve the agenda. Okay. And, and, and note any changes or amendments. And Mary Beth, you made a motion to- Yes. And I'll second. Okay, I'll call the roll on the approval of tonight's agenda, Skip Daly. Yay. Uh, Mary Beth Kismarchuk. Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Bernie Garitas. Yes. Tonight's agenda is approved. Okay. We have some minutes we need to approve. Is that correct? I don't believe that there were minutes sent out. They were sent out. There was um, February's and March. The links were in the email, but it doesn't show on this agenda. Okay. Okay. All right. Did we want to go ahead and do that, or are we going to wait until it gets on the agenda? You can move to approve them if you had a chance to review them. Okay. Yes, yeah, Skip? Is that normal practice that minutes are three or four months in the behind? I think one of the problems is with uh, having the meetings virtually, it's, they're much more difficult to uh, transcribe. Uh, we actually have transcription systems set up in the courthouse for our real meetings, uh, but uh, we have to transfer, transcribe these from the video, and it's very hard to pause and reverse and do the things you would normally do with a uh, uh, transcription machine. Uh, secondly, we've had really long meetings and a lot of things on the agenda. So I think that's also slowed, slowed things down as well. Yeah, that, but we'll, that, we'll try to get caught up. No, yeah, and I'm not complaining. I'm just asking for reference that you'll remember I'm somewhat new to the board and uh, my only meetings have been virtual. So I'm just trying to get caught up to speed and understand what how things go. It's a good question and a good prompt for us to make sure we get them caught up. Okay, did we want to go ahead and approve those minutes then? I think you can, the approval of the minutes is on the agenda. Uh, I'm not sure it's necessary to basically list the individual minutes on the agenda since they're on there. Uh, we just need to note which minutes are being approved by the motion. So it was uh, February 3rd of 2021 and March 3rd of 2021. I move that we uh, approve the minutes 
for the February 3rd, 2021 and March 3rd, 2021 as shown on the agenda for August 4th, 2021's Board of Zoning Appeals meeting. I'll second. Okay, the motion is to approve the minutes from the Mar uh, February and March meetings of the Board of Zoning Appeals as were distributed to the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals through via email. Again, the motion, uh, favorable motion is the motion to approve the minutes for both February and March. Mary Beth Marchek? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Rudy Geritas? Yes. Skip Daly? Abstain. Okay, uh, the minutes are approved by a three uh, vote with one abstention. Okay. First up, we got some old business, and that is uh, case number 1812-VAR-40, and this is uh, Jackie's uh, case. Wanna... Yes, thanks, Mary Beth. Um, so this one is the use variance pads her general contractor for a parcel at 5605 South Old State Road 37. Uh, just a quick history on this case. It was continued from last month, but it's been uh, continued a number of times in order to allow the petitioner to move off of the site completely. Uh, we have been reviewing their site for their new location, which is actually across the street in this yellow square. Uh, the property that we're talking about tonight is in the red triangle at 5601 South Old State Road 37. Um, since last month, there has been some progress made on this, um, and I'll go ahead and provide with a few updates, but the request tonight is for a use variance that would allow for a general contractor use in a, a state residential zone. Um, the petitioner built an accessory structure and is running a business for the way plumbing out of it, and so therefore uh, there's been some enforcement issues. Um, here's just an aerial of the site at one time. Staff did go out there and has spoken with the petitioner on a number of occasions and his plan is to completely move the business from this location to the new business location across the street where the zoning is appropriate. Um, the issues with the new site is that uh, there's been very slow movement on getting improvements up and running, including stormwater detention, so uh, we are presenting this still because he's running it out of this site until he can get occupancy for his new site. So uh, this was a photo from last month, right before the BZA. Uh, this was taken yesterday. So they're working on it. It is a little bit slower than we would like and we cannot issue occupancy until, um, or land use certificate rather for this site until it's a little bit more stabilized and complete. So um, just wanted to note about the new site. Um, we just want to see the petitioner close out the old site, which is asking for a use variance. The petitioner does not want to actually run a general contractor use on this site. And if it were approved by the BZA, it would actually run with the land. They do want to move over to this new site, but there's been some holdup in um, being able to get the improvements completed. So just kind of giving you an update on both sites because they're somewhat related but separate. So staff is recommending denial for the use variance for the original site 5601 South Old State Road 37 due to the fact it's zone estate residential has a, a residential use on the property and a general contractor is currently not permitted. Any questions? Anyone have questions for Jackie? Bernie? Okay, just for, for the sake of my own keeping things in order here. So they are on the site on the other side of the road, or they're on the other side, and they are on the site that they are in violation of, they are, they are still currently working off that property. Is that correct, Jackie? As the last that I spoke with Mr. Patzner on this site, he was uh, essentially still running out of this site because this site was not fully completed. Um, so we had talked to him about, you know, completely removing this site. And I think he said he was going to put it up for sale once he was moved out. And I just checked before this meeting, it's not up for sale. Um, but the site did look 
relatively free of vehicles when I was out there. And this was a few weeks ago. So he is moving things out, but um, yeah, there's still some business activity to my understanding. And he's not, wor is, is he working on the, the new property? Is he working out of the new property? Okay. So, so it, he's not supposed to be occupying the new property. So until building gives occupancy and that's the issue is that if the other site has been slow to uh, have improvements made and so he's kind of stuck in that um, you know the other site needs to be finalized cleaned up and we can issue occupancy and land use certificate but meanwhile he's a violation case running out of a, a spot that isn't zoned correctly Okay, I know Skip has a hand. I'm trying to kind of lay this out a little bit better because we've given, is Mr. Patchner, is he going to be on the uh, call this evening, Jackie? Do you know? I did send it to him last week. I don't know. I, and I talked to him yesterday. He might just have forgotten. I don't see him on here. I can message him real fast as well. Skip, what questions do you have in time? Real quick question. Uh, Jackie, what is it you're looking for at this point? I'm, I'm not clear on that. Are you looking to offer a uh, time allotted ultimatum final, or it, are you looking to say time's up tonight? Um, uh, uh, no further business as of tomorrow morning. I'm, I'm not sure what you're looking to do. Yeah, it's a good question, Skip. I think we should... Uh, what we're recommending is denial because the use is not permitted. We are trying to work with the petitioner to get the other site moving. Uh, but as Bernie pointed out, they're not issued occupancy quite yet. So um, ideally, we've been working with the petitioner for several weeks and have alerted them to the timeline for, for a long time. Um, but they said they contacted an excavation company on J July 1st. And the earliest that company could come out was uh, August 2nd. So they, you know, did the detention pond um, excavating on the 2nd. And the picture I took is from yesterday. So it's just been a little slower going this time of year and, would, and especially this year. Would you be amenable to a motion saying 15 of October, done? So the way that we have been advised by legal is essentially if the BZA does not want to see the planning department um, take on enforcement of the property in question, which is this red triangle, then the proper action, I believe, is to continue the case because it's not really the ability of the BZA to do like a sunset denial. Um, it's more so that you would just table it and then deny it at a later date once it became an issue again. So. Okay, well, excuse me, Mary Beth. Go yeah. ahead. Are you done, Skip? Excuse me. Okay, because that's, that's why I was just kind of laying this out. So, you know, it, is the list of items that they still need to do for the, I'll just make it easy, the square box or the, the uh, yellow square is it basically the landscaping and the bioretention basin? Is that what we're talking about? Are the hard improvements done as far as surfacing, building, those types of things? Yes, there are some aesthetic things to screen the dumpster, remove construction debris, uh, which is called out. But I think those things could be done fairly quickly with the exception of landscaping. Okay. All right, that, that's all I have, Mary Beth. Uh, any more questions for Jackie? I have a question, Mary Beth. Yes, uh, Jackie. So if, if this was denied tonight, would he have to stop operating his business until everything is completed at the new site? So essentially, if the VZA denies this tonight, we would be allowed to go ahead and restart enforcement on the property. So typically we work with the property owner and give them, you know, two weeks or up to four weeks. In this case, it's probably more like two weeks to say you need to cease and desist at this location and locate the other business um, elsewhere. And so we think that there's enough uh, internal pressure 
by the owner themselves because they do want occupancy of this other site. But um, obviously the BZA has seen this a number of times. And so if we did deny it, we would work with the petitioner to ask them to cease and desist as soon as possible and um, close it out as an enforcement issue. Okay. And some of the reasons he may have given were they uh, reasons that were uh, typical for a business to get started or were they just delays because he didn't follow through? Do you know, do you have an answer for that? Uh, you mean at the new site? Yeah. I think, you know, it's partially in talking with the petitioner, um, a little bit of staff frustration has been just a number of times we have gone out there and have not seen the improvements that we think could have been made quickly. Um, and so it's almost becoming, um, you know, a dual enforcement case because we want them away from the incorrectly zoned parcel, but yet the other site is like just not there. And, you know, we've had some issues all along. Um, but as, as far as, you know, the delays that COVID has brought, those are serious and those have impacted the site certainly. Um, so I can't speak to those exact delays that they've seen, but it's just gone a lot slower than we had been promised by the petitioner. And so it just is seeming that it's getting drug out a lot longer, um, which causes us concern for the next stage of landscaping being completed and the site completely closing it out. Uh, we don't like to have to go out to a site for months and months and months. We just want to go out once, state that it's finished and be done with it. Thank you. Skip, you have your hand raised. I do. And I think what I'm saying is let's, I'd like to move forward one way or another. I'm comfortable. I'm going to use quotation marks with that, making a motion to table this 30 days and have that be my end final date so we can move forward with the rest of the agenda because I'm kind of hearing mixed messages. I'm hearing COVID. There's progress being made now, but it has been frustrating. So I'm willing to make a motion to table this for the next meeting. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure if that's the recommendation or not, but if, if you guys are comfortable doing that, I guess someone will second it. You have your hand up. Bernie, did you have your hand raised? I did. I, I'd i like to go ahead and uh, let's go through the public and then we'll come back to the BZA. Bef I mean, if, before, I'm, before I ask my last question. So. Okay. All right. Is, is Sorry, Mary Beth. I accidentally pressed mute on your screen instead of my own. Is the petitioner here this evening? I do not see them. Is there anyone here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition? Hello? Is this for Tom West? No, it is not. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. This is for Neil Patzner. I see no one here that wishes to speak on behalf of this petition. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? And I'm not seeing anybody that would like to speak against the petition. Uh, are we ready for a motion then? Okay, Mary Beth, I, here's my question to staff. Is it reasonable, and I think I heard you say, Jackie, it's reasonable to think that if they went under enforcement on the existing site, the red triangle, okay, that it would be probably four weeks before anything would happen as an enforcement action. Is that, is that correct or not? So uh, as far as how we're able to operate and, and get letters out and then make contact and work with the petitioner, I think per the ordinance we could potentially issue things quicker, but you know, we're gonna work with them and 
make sure that they can move over to the other site. Um, I think two to four weeks is a reasonable timeline before fines could be issued. Well, and that's where I'm going, Skip, and I understand where you're, I mean, I'm right there with you, but I'm just about ready to put a, a motion of denial on this to get that going. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because we have, COVID or otherwise, we've extended this petition multiple, multiple times. And we've been very sensitive and, and there has been progress throughout the, throughout the whole site, uh, you know, even from getting to a point where he was con contracting an engineer and a surveyor to help him get site plan no, situated. Uh, so, if, if the amount of work he has left to do can be done in two to four weeks, which is about the same time that it would, it would take for staff to barrel down the enforcement, then I'm leaning towards denial and that, that'll, that'll give him time to get situated. And I'm happy to hear, discussion on, I'm happy to hear discussion on that from, from the members. Cause I, I'm not all the way there yet. I concur. I, this case has been around since Peter was on the BZA. <laughs> so it has been pushed down the road quite a bit. Well, and I think that this is what we do. I think it's a good thing to work with the public and staff has done a heroic job helping, helping, helping this business and continue it and keep it going. But at, at some point, I, I don't want this just to be a tabletop approval to move it on to the next step when there are so many people in the community that do what they're supposed to do. Yes, I, I agree. So Jack, Can you go ahead and make a motion to deny and then yeah I, I i can make a motion or, or just or, just to clarify skip. uh skip made a motion that's still on the floor i think oh i will withdraw that motion okay now we can proceed i'm sorry skip i didn't gather that that was a motion i thought you were talking hypothetically excuse me legally he had to i had to withdraw it that's fine Okay, in the matter of uh, case 1812 VAR-40 Patsner General Co Contractor Use Variance to Chapter 802, uh, I move that we deny the use variance uh, based on the staff report and findings of fact. I second. Okay. Okay. I'm call roll, Larry. Uh, I will call the roll on uh, item number 812-VR-40, Panzer General Contractor Use Variance to Chapter 802 for the real estate located at 5605 South Old State Road 37. The motion is to deny the use variance. Again, a motion of yes is a motion to, de is a vote to deny the use variance. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. V Bernie Garitas? Yes. Skip Daly? In keeping with hopes that the planning department will work in terms of enforcement, I vote yay. Hey, Mary Beskis Marchek. Yes. Uh, the youth variance is denied by a four to zero vote. Thank you for all your tireless work on this particular one, Jackie. Okay, next up we have case number VAR-21-24. Tammy? That you? Yeah. Um, Jackie, can I have the ability to share screen for this so you don't have to do all this? Yeah. yeah. You should be able to now, Tammy. Oh, hold on. You know what? I don't have the slides pulled up. All I have is the packet. I apologize for not being prepared. I'm gonna stop sharing screen. You got it? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so this petition was heard back on May the 5th, 2021. That was about three months ago. I was wondering, um, do we need a full presentation of this? I almost think Skip 
maybe was not present for that previous meeting. I, I, I would like to have a full presentation just to refresh it since it was May, Tammy. That's this was fine. Like, I remember this was one that was had a lot of moving parts. Dead. Yeah. Okay. I will Thank get you. started on that. I almost wish I could just press play on the cat's link. All right. So Jackie, uh, so this is the WIS side yard setback variance to chapter 804. It's a half acre parcel in Benton Township North, section 21 at 8188 East North Shore Drive. So here's the summary. They're requesting a side yard setback because they uh, have encroached 3.3 feet into a five foot setback. Um, and by, by allowing this variance, it would allow them to keep a first story and a second story deck on a, an accessory structure. Um, there was a permit that was, that was issued way back in um, 2017. And we received a complaint that the structure was not being built on the property, which um, prompted staff to put up an, as, you know, to request an as built. And um, the you'll see the survey in a, in a bit of what the result was. But in summary, they're here to get a side yard setback variance um, for some porches that were not entirely disclosed on a permit that, that was submitted. Uh, so the zoning here is uh, suburb, or, yeah, suburban residential, it's the orange, and comprehensive plan has it as rural residential. These are some of the previous site condition pictures. They're older aerials. Um, the left one, you can see the red, the red square is their half acre. Um, they did a significant amount of grading, which actually resulted in another enforcement case separate from this one. Uh, since then, I will state that during the staff's um, site visit last time that the site was relatively stabilized. I did not see any issues um, with erosion at that time. And then we have a slope map to the right there showing all these slopes were restricted at the time um, when the grading was occurring for structures. These are some of the site photos. So in the top picture, you'll see the, um, the residence that was um, permitted, and then in the foreground is the accessory structure, and it's labeled as a boathouse. And then the bottom picture is another picture of the boathouse, and you will see uh, the decks that we're that we're discussing here, the upper and the lower deck. Um, the petitioner has claimed that those are required for some accessibility to uh, an easement that they own, and then also on that picture, there's. There is like an overhead garage door that opens out straight onto the ground there, supposedly to put boats in and out of. And then um, the top picture again, we're, sh we're showing the decks, the upper and lower decks that both have the doorways entering out to the east side of that structure and the uh, uh, garage door. The right-hand picture is the west side where you see an upper and lower deck as well. There is no uh, setback issue here. In fact, you will see on the lower floor a zero step entry, which is accessible. And there are two doors in front of the structure facing south. And those are, um, you know, they appear to be like large sliding doors. Um, might wanna ask the petitioner exactly what those, um, how those work, but. Uh, this is the southern side of the accessory structure. They are allowed to be 10 feet off the property line with the structure, but you'll also notice that there's a lot of gravel. They have um, slopped over their property line and are, are on City of Bloomington property here with their access and their storing materials on the city side as well. City has also taken um, some minor enforcement proceedings on this petitioner in the past as well. And then the bottom picture is just uh, kind of for the record that they hooked this uh, accessory structure, this boathouse into the septic system. There were claims during the previous May 5th um, hearing that the petitioner had a five bedroom septic installed, but the health department only had a three bedroom septic reported here. And I did upload and there's a link to it in the staff report, the 30 page septic document. Um, 
staff did request the alternative document from the petitioner and we have not seen that come through. And again, these are some pictures. The upper is the accessory structure from the front showing some of the extra doors. And then there's an aerial view. Um, not sure what year that's from, but it looks like it was prior to some of the erosion control enforcement. And again, one of the aerial photos of the right-hand structure being the accessory structure in question, the shelter house that was to the north there. Um, staff has not confirmed that that has been removed, but it, it should not be there as an easement. And another aerial photo of the site. Uh, this is the petitioner's letter on the left. This was the um, an original, well, this was a site plan. It's the as-built that was submitted. They added a driveway onto here, um, which we had issues with because um, the city of Bloomington did confirm that there is no easement for that area. And so we had requested a new site plan. And I did see there's someone in the, oh, go ahead. Um, and the as-built here, you can see, I might have on the next slide, Jackie, a more, nope, I do not, sorry. The as-built though, um, Jackie's demonstrating that there is the deck that is 1.7 feet from the property line. Now we're gonna get into this um, easement agreement that was put together in 2015 with a neighboring property, the Zimmerman property. So on the right side, you can see highlighted in yellow there, uh, the Wisp property, that's the half acre. He is leasing um, from his neighboring property, the Zimmerman property, which is, I don't, know, I don't know how many acres it is, but he has put together a document stating that the, that the land to the west and the east of him is for a recreational easement. Uh, this, the way it's drawn up, allows him to have the septic system on that site. It can restrict the access of the actual property owner from using this property. And it also left the Zimmerman property owner with um, a lake access that is very long and narrow and goes straight down a hill and has not functioned properly as a access to the lake since um, all the construction and grading work had occurred. We had a supporting document that the petitioner submitted stating that the reason they needed the um, these two porches to the side was so that they could have a handicapped ramp for a medical reasons for a family member. And then we do have a couple of letters um, of concern from uh, the neighboring property, the, the Zimmerman property. Um, and then we also have the city of Bloomington, they, they are not expressing interest in the side yard setback necessarily. They're keeping an eye on their property um, in other ways, though I think they would appreciate, um, you know, they, they're interested in what this garage or boathouse actually turns into. A lot of neighbors have expressed concerns. I had fielded another phone call regarding that. And here we have another letter of concern um, regarding this property. So hopefully you had a chance to read some of these. They were in the um, we have had some difficulties getting the petitioner to submit um, additional information. So we had requested an updated site plan that showed the driveway um, and, you know, explained more about this ADA ramp that they were wanting to put in because obviously from the photos that does not look accessible down to the ground. Um, we also had requested that they, you know, provide of some details of the ramp, um, like the height and the slope measurements, and then also that septic system document claiming that there are five bedrooms um, for this site in general. So today, um, submitted, I'm not sure what time, I barely saw this come through, there was no other further outreach. We had one document uploaded into our OpenGov portal showing the ramp design here. Um, and they're stating that, you know, the four foot wide ramp um, will have a rise of one inch from the end to and it's 12 feet long, 36 inches wide. Um, 
which is better than ADA standards. I do, I did have, I didn't have a lot of time to evaluate this. Um, I, I did look up briefly that residential structures do not have to meet commercial standard type ADA ramps. Um, so I'm not 100% sure that this uh, is an acceptable design. It's kind of hard to tell, uh, you know, from a side view. And I have seen that some of the turnaround, like where the platforms are, should have like a, a proper entry out the door that allows a wheelchair to turn around and also to land on a solid landing. We don't have any documentation on that here, but I am going to put this that this was submitted today. Uh, staff recommendation for BAR-21-24 is to deny the side yard setback variance based on the findings of fact, specifically finding C. It's a self-created hardship. Uh, we do think that there are other ways to make the residential accessory structure or boathouse um, accessible because we do see areas where there are zero step landings. They have the flat um, drive area that crosses to the south. Uh, so at a minimum, I think, you know, there's that second story deck that also encroaches into the setback and there's not a way for, uh, that, that shouldn't be claimed to be a part of the ADA accessibility. Does anyone have any questions? Are there any questions from uh, the board for Tammy? Bernie? Just a couple minor things tammy on the the borgman drawing and the way i look at the borgman drawing that was submitted today that was done by a licensed uh, professional so you know a lot of it we can take that as being compliant with the ada standards because it does mention it i'm not going to go there too much but that that adds some credibility to me so the 48 inches is what the width of the the porches are that come off the side of the house correct so if if for them to be compliant they would need to remove basically 1.7 feet from the from the east edge of the of the of the porches that are closest to the city of Bloomington am I right on that um yours for the side yard setback yeah. I think the entire part of it would need to be removed um, the structure itself does meet the side yard setback and actually has a half of a foot to like, oh, okay. it has a half of a foot extra. Okay. And so if they're a half foot extra, then they need that three and a half feet basically to accommodate the ramp. Okay, so they need five, so they're three foot, they have a 3.3 .3 foot encroachment is what you're saying. Correct, currently okay. with okay. what is built there okay. now. So, okay, that, that clears that up. So, and I will say, I didn't check the date of this drawing. I'm not sure if this was added by the petitioner or if this, the, red, this, the area in red, um, I'm not positive if that was actually a Todd Borgman drawing or if that was from the petitioner. Oh. I, you will want to ask that probably. We, we should ask that because that, that that's yeah, a yeah. difference. Uh, and we can do that after, yeah, I'll keep going. <laughs> so, so again, keying in from our last meeting, uh, the other question I have, is there not a question of use here also? There is no yeah. occupancy for this structure yet. And until there is a certificate of occupancy for it, we can't tell what it's being used for. It's I currently understand. under construction. Okay, I understand that. Okay. that, that, that question came up. That's a great answer. Thank you for that. Uh, and I do note in the, in the letters that uh, the city of Bloomington says there's little concern with what uh, with, with regards to the side yard setback, and I'm going to have to mute because my train is going by. Your train, Bernie. Hold on. There just you go. Okay. Okay, that's all I've got for now. Thanks, Tammy. Uh, Bernie, I did see that there is a date on this. Dated January, I think, 16th, 2021. Yeah, that's very good. I think what 
I think what Tammy may be wondering is, did Mr. Borgman uh, edit the red rectangle, the arrow and the text, or was that uh, something maybe the petitioner put together as an illustration oh, of what? I, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? And that, and that, that's a great question. A good, it's an excellent point to point yeah. out, Tammy. <clears throat> okay. Are there any further questions for Tammy? I see none from the board. So uh, is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name. Thomas Wiss. I'm the owner. Okay. And what would you like to tell us, sir? Well, basically, uh, we're just trying to put a wheelchair ramp in and uh, the setbacks for all the buildings, all the structures meet the code as uh, they're supposed to be. The uh, portion, the deck portion, that she was talking about, the uh, 1.7 uh, encroaches on the uh, easement next door, which we have full control of on both sides. And if you look at the pictures previously, uh, there's a garage door there. And I will tell you that uh, Tammy Bierman told you that the terrain for the driveway uh, coming down from the very top of the hill down to the bottom of the hill is very, very steep and treacherous for, for a, a person in good shape to walk down. Uh, I do have a sister in a wheelchair that I'm trying to uh, get her to have some lake access as far as visiting. And uh, the plan was to drive down and pull up around the building, which we have plenty of room uh, to the, where the garage door is there and get her out of the car and get her up on the deck uh, with the wheelchair ramp that is right next to the building. So it's as simple as that. And uh, nobody is next door uh, where it would be an encroachment problem. If you look at the pictures that are zooming up there, um, it's, it's all about, you know, access for somebody that's disabled. It's that simple. And this structure is not. I'm sorry, I, sir. What's your name? Evan Wiss. Thank you. So this structure, in no way, shape, or form, is a house or any sort of residential structure. It is simply a garage that was built to a standard to not look like an ugly garage. It was supposed to be better looking, you know. So that's. I don't know why it keeps coming up that it's a house that, that's completely false. Um, there's never been any intent. If you go inside there, it's an open structure. There's no demising walls for bedrooms or anything of that nature. So, um, you know, it, it's simply a boat shack where we're going to park a boat in the winter time to keep it out of the snow. That's it. And, uh, you know, to, to load up people and take them down to the water and have a good time. So, I mean, we also have an easement for our dock uh, through the city, uh, through the uh, conservancy, and uh, the building is only 24 feet wide. Why people keep saying that we're going to have somebody living in there is ridiculous. My privacy is paramount with the, the house above. No one is going to be living in there, and I did. I've been going by the book all along, and I wanted a bathroom in there. Because if you walk from that building, any one of you on the board up to the house to go to the bathroom, you'll wish you wouldn't have done that. So that's the whole thinking behind that. I told the, uh, the uh, septic people, the Board of Health, Randy Rains, he came out and he said he wanted a five bedroom. It cost me a lot more money to put the five bedroom in versus the three bedroom. The house only has two bedrooms in it. So Nobody will ever be living in that structure. And the whole reason I built it like that, if you look at the overall picture, it looks like the upper structure. 
the roof line and everything. I wanted them to look good and uh, they do look good. I hate to say that, but uh, this is all about my sister getting down there. You know, we drive her down there and unload her in there and uh, she can enjoy the, the lake like the rest of us. It's that simple. And, and to address a couple of things at the beginning, to say that we cut off access and all those things, that's simply just not true. We rebuilt an entire road to the tune of almost $100,000 and had it prepped, it was inspected and signed off by the county and handed over to the other residents. And we made sure they had access to the lake before we cut their access off, even though we didn't really even have to do that. That was the neighborly thing to do. And they failed to maintain the road from that, that point moving on. And there's nothing we can do about that, you know? So um, it's, it's up to them to maintain their access to the lake, just like it's up to us to maintain ours. And, uh, you know, that, that's hurtful to hear that comment go unattested. So, um, you know, that is where we stand on that. And the five bedroom thing, that's just some sort of, I don't know, paperwork mishap. They, there's literally a five bedroom septic system in the ground there. And we have receipts to prove it of, you know, taking out more money and redoing it. So, um, I mean, this whole thing, all we trying to do is just provide someone access to a building to the lake over 1.7 feet. And all this other stuff is getting drug into it, which would have never even been talked about to begin with, you know? So I'm just trying to figure out how we can wrap this up today and move forward. I would like to add that Thank you. access that we put in on the other side of the property, it was an agreement that we do that. We did our part and it passed the, the county inspection and it was turned over to the, the neighbor lady who's been doing all the complaining I know. And uh, through mediation, she is not supposed to be filing any complaints that's a, a written document. And she's been causing more trouble in the neighborhood all about this, but they allowed this thing to go downhill and cause an erosion problem over there. It's out of our hands. I did that in, in good faith and it did. It cost me a ton of money and they just let it go. And that's all I, they did. They just, matter of fact, I think she, uh, walked away from her land uh, probably six months ago. It's in foreclosure. And okay, has thank you, sir. Uh, does any of the board have questions for the petitioner? I see Skip has his hand raised. Do you have a question? I do. Thank you. Um, is it Mr. Wiss? Is that your name? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Wiss, I'm... I'm a little confused. I'm, I'm hearing it's an open building inside there, um, but you need to drive around a family member who is confined to a wheelchair. If it's an open building, what I'm not sure of is, is why would you design an external deck and ramp as opposed to being able to provide access through a the door which is facing zero slope on the opposing side is the garage door. That's a good question. So she became disabled after this project was started. Otherwise, we would have designed it differently. And uh, you know, you know, that's that's on us. We we accept the the fault there. But, you know, it doesn't, we're still in construction and we thought this was a good time to do it as any, you know, so we, you know, we want to get her down there. The other thing too, is it's just a little workshop. I'm retired now. I ran a business for 40 years um, to service the public and uh, also worked in surgery many years. And I do know about disabled people and, uh, I still have my license to work in surgery. So uh, to keep it simple, it's just a workshop. And I'm telling you, if you do have to go to the bathroom, you don't want to have to march up that hill uh, on a bad day, so to speak, but it's, it's a climb 
And believe me, if you do it one time, anybody on the board, you would understand totally what I'm saying. It's just going to be a small bathroom. That's it. And Randy Rains of the Board of Health, the, uh, the septic guy, he said, I, it doesn't matter how many bedrooms you have up there. I only have two in the house. You can't be in both that, the bedroom and the bathroom at the same time. So, you know, it was his call to make it a five bedroom. And I went to the five bedroom by his call. There was no, uh, no way of fighting back on that. He said, I want a five bedroom. So that's what he got. Okay, thank you, sir. Does that answer your question, Skip? Um, not quite certain, but I, I, I've, I've heard their piece. Okay, Bernie, you have a question? Yeah, uh, okay, so first of all, uh, Evan, and I'll call you by your first name just to differentiate between yeah. you and the gentleman to your left. Uh, when I brought up the use, just to be clear, I'm not mm -hmm. accusing anybody of using the property for a different intent than what's stated in the petition, but it's been since May when we had this hearing before, and I just wanted to, to bring that point up because it was a question asked. So I'm, oh, happy, no, with Tam I'm happy with Tammy's answer, and I'm not going to delve into that. And then at the time of occupancy, my assumption would be if there's a use in there that doesn't match what the what the allowed use is and we would maybe see you again. So I'm gonna put that to bed. Okay, we didn't, uh, I mean, that's from, fine. From my standpoint. So secondly, uh, you know, we've, we've got this, the uh, survey by Todd Borgman uh, showing this access ramp and then, and then the, the rectangle with the red text. And if you had that at the last hearing and I didn't catch that, pardon me, but is that text and are those, the uh, assertions on that for the ramp, are those done by the professional engineering surveying firm or was that just, you put it on there as an exhibit to illustrate what your plan was? So um, I, I did those um, and okay. I tried to upload them about almost four weeks ago and I, they didn't stick. So I did it when I got on for the meeting this morning to make sure everything was there, I noticed it wasn't on there. So I uploaded it again. So that's why it looks like it came through last minute. Um, but I work in the commercial real estate industry and in shopping malls and strip centers. And I had one of our CAD people put this together. Um, and I didn't realize you guys wanted a, a totally re-engineered site plan. Um, you know, I thought it just needed to show the dimensions is what was communicated to me, I believe. Um, so that's what I did. It shows you know, and tried to keep it as basic as possible um, because it's a, it's a ramp and there's really no drop off. It's just, um, it's about an inch and the 12 foot takes you almost all the way to that garage door where it'll be a seamless transition and it'll be 36 inches wide. There'll be a handrail um, and the, the porch itself where you land will be four foot. Okay, Tammy or Tammy or Jackie, would you go to one of the photos that shows the 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 building where that where the uh, I don't call them, I, the porches are or the decks, whatever we're talking about here. So yes. it's, okay, so from and bear with me here because we're trying to describe things over the internet uh, on on screen. So you've got the white door, and that is basically at the very end of where this porch is or Correct. this deck and then from the there the what's that that'll be the top of the ramp right there okay so then from there it's going to go to the north and it's going to it's going to bottom out on the ground is that correct yes and then what's right so where the gravel is there by the 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 lighter brown garage door this level with the building so the plan would be for that to dead end it basically pretty close to where the garage door's at? Yeah, pretty close to it. So then what's going to happen? Is there is there an interior access? Why do we need a handicap ramp there to get to the garage door? To get on the porch. Yeah. So if somebody's in inside the garage or inside the building and they want to go out through the garage door, then they can go up the ramp and then they get on the porch. 
No, it goes directly onto the porch. If you look at that, it goes just past that access door. There's a porch on the front of the building. Mm -hmm. And it's all the same level. Are you are you asking why couldn't they just go in the garage, the, the roll up garage door instead of the small doors out you're asking? Yeah, I mean, if this is just a big open room and we've made the doors and we've made the porches and everything else aesthetic to what the structures are that we're already in, why are we, what, is, well, it a, is it a single level on the inside of the building or is it multiple levels? It's it just, two levels um, and it's pretty much just storage upstairs. Um, but downstairs, if there's a boat or a truck parked in the garage, I don't want to have to have my aunt navigate that you know, in her wheelchair. And not only that, it's kind of a dignity thing, you know, so don't say, hey, you know, Aunt Pat, go through the garage. Everyone else is going through the front door. You know, it's it's just a, it's a convenience factor. It's, that's all it is. You yeah, know? I, I can understand that. I, I guess what I'm trying to understand though is if if your aunt or some, some other person that, that, needs, that needs ADA assistance is inside the building, why can't they just go, Jackie could, or Tammy, could you go to the, the front of the building where this corner wraps around? Because I really am trying to get my head around what the need is here. Okay. If it's all one level on the lower floor, why can't somebody come out the, the door and come out on the front porch? Well, I plan on having table saws, drill press, and other things in there just as a hobby uh, and uh, for her to be inside a small workshop, like I said, it's only 24 feet wide. Mm -hmm. It's, it's pretty small. And then when you put, uh, you know, tools and other things in there, her, her old, whole deal is just to get on that porch and it overlooks the lake. It's that simple. And, and one more thing, the, the picture on the top left corner of the screen here, you can see there's an, in, uh, an ingress door there um, that looks like it could be fairly easy um, to access. But in reality, the ground is a little bit graded there. It's, it's not as flat as it is on the other side. So that was also another reason why. Um, we would like to do a ramp there. It just might impede in the driveway and it's just harder to do it there. It doesn't look like it is, but it is. So why is there, are there stairs or is there an elevator? What, what's on the inside that would get a person up to the upper deck? Nothing. The, nothing. There's nothing. It's just going to be a workshop. So what's the purpose of the deck on the upstairs? Just for, uh, you know, to look out. It was to match the house it's mainly. To match the house and the, the, the way the building is. You only have so much land to build on, so you might as well take the best use possible with your land and after you know 40 years and kids you end up with a lot of stuff you got to try and put away well, i can certainly respect that <laughs> okay uh i guess i'm i guess we're getting tangled up in this this ada ramp and i don't think that we've got anything that's illustrating Tammy, do you need something to illustrate the elevations and grades of this of this of the ramp? Because right now I don't see that we have a drawing that illustrates uh, compliance to ADA standards or what the final goal is. And if it's something that can actually, I'm not approving an ADA standard ramp for sure. Well, this is a residential ramp. Mm -hmm. Let's keep that clear. The public is not invited. It's strictly family. And I'm not going to build something. Then I'm going to get something to where I've damaged my sister's health. And like I said, I've been in the health care for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's pretty simple little ramp. And, it, and if you, uh, we've already had to pay an engineer, you know, over $1,000 to deal with this little 1.7 little uh sticking sticking out and actually we have control of that whole lot the other half acre it's not bothering anybody it's, it's actually three it's actually 3.3 feet isn't it i think it's right. only 1.7 actually from if you look at this map right here 
It shows 1.7 from the edge. It angles. Yeah. Yeah, but Tammy, isn't the encroachment on the setback 3.3? Yes. I just don't see how we're getting to 3.3, honestly. Well, the, the 1.7 is the distance from the porch to the property line, okay? Mm -hmm. And the, the structure is five and a half feet. So the setback, you're supposed to have, it's supposed to be five feet from the property line, the bold black line, before you can build anything. That's the whole reason we're here. That's yes. the whole reason why we're going through this process because it was built uh, with, with just the deck. There's no roof over it or nothing. Right. I, I was just explaining to Evan yeah, the difference okay. between the 1.7 and the 3, 3.8. Okay, so I, I follow your logic there. So it looks like it may be like 2.2 feet or so, but yeah, it's, it's not a ton of distance. I, I agree with you. And, you know, we don't want to waste your guys' time. You guys got more important things to talk about. We just need to get an answer today. Are we going to get access for a woman who would like to be there or not? You know, so we've got to move on. And, um, you know, it, this should, I honestly thought this would take 10 minutes. I really did. But. Any further questions, Bernie? No. Is there any here one here else who would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Nope, we're good. Is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Not seeing anyone. Uh, do any of the members of the board have a motion that they would like to make? Okay. Matter of uh, VAR-21-24, Weiss side yard setback variance to chapter 804. I move that we deny the variance based on findings of fact and staff is found in the staff report. I'll second the motion. Nicole Rollary. Sorry, I had to unmute. Uh, okay, the vote is on variance 21 24 with side yard setback development standards variance chapter 804 for the property located at 8188 East North Shore Drive. The motion is to deny the variance based upon the findings uh, and uh, based upon the staff report. Again, a motion of yes is a motion to deny. Bernie Caritas. Yes. Skip Daly. Yay. Mary Beth Kismarczyk. Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Variance is denied by a four to zero vote. I hope you're never disabled. You're gonna walk that road. Have a good evening, sir. Okay, next up we have case number Numbers VAR-21-42A dash dash and VAR-21-42B. Dash dash Mary Beth, those items were listed on the agenda as continued, so. I'm sorry, I missed that somehow. Okay. Then we just have the one left, is that correct? I believe there are uh, two remaining. Kennington, oh, sorry, 42A and 42B. I'm sorry, Mary Beth, you were correct. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, the PowerPoint, it must be off. I'll get that fixed. All yeah. right. Mary Beth, this is Rebecca. Um, this, I think, a so let's see, Jackie, when I was looking at the slide deck a moment ago, I didn't actually see my slides in this, in this particular deck. So 
Um, I think I can share my screen. I've got them ready to go on this side. Yep, go for it. Okay. And just confirming we are ready to hear this, this petition, yes. right? Okay, Please great. Please proceed. Okay. Okay, everyone, everyone see the slide? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so um, this is a request uh, for a variance to the 15% slope requirements, um, which is buildable area from chapter 833 as well as a variance request to the karst and sinkhole development standards of chapter 829. And this is for one um, 0.39 acre parcel in Van Buren Township addressed at 3316 West Jordan Court. It is cor currently zoned RS 3.5 and the comp plan shows it as um, suburban residential. So um, this petition was heard at last month's EZA, um, but it did not, uh, uh, a motion failed, I think due to lack of a quorum. Um, I think that's, that was the case on this one. So at any rate, it's back here tonight for your consideration again. Um, so the petitioner is wanting to construct a 12 foot by 16 foot shed um, on their property and their proposed location of the shed is in slopes that are greater than 15%, um, thereby uh, violating our, build our, our um, slope regulations. And additionally, the proposed location of the structure is not meeting the ordinance's requirement of a 50 foot setback uh, from sinkhole rims for structures. Um, so in other words, where the petitioner ideally would like to put this uh, shed is uh, not meeting, it, it's within the 50 foot uh, distance of or to the sinkhole rim. Uh, so here we have some site photos on the left side of your screen. You can see the uh, position or location of the proposed shed. Uh, the petitioner had gotten a little bit started on the project and then uh, realized or, or was informed that he needed um, to pursue the variance. Um, you can see that he is intending to uh, put the shed on these concrete piers. Um, he is aware of the, obviously he's aware of the sinkhole um, in his, on his property. So he was uh, sort of, um, you know, factoring in that with the design and use of the concrete piers. Um, the photograph on the left um, is a shot looking um, sort of across the yard um, and while it's hard to pinpoint the sinkhole, um, it is somewhere back there um, in the woods, uh, um, sort of on the right-hand side of this picture that's on the right-hand side of your screen. And so the relationship between the sinkhole is probably, is over here um, and here's the proposed sh shed. And so it's this distance um, that's not meeting the 50 foot requirement. Uh, some more photographs. Um, this is a sh uh, picture on the left is a shot looking up at the petitioners, um, the back of, of their house. And um, just a um, picture on the right is another close up of the um, beginning of the construction of the shed. Um, so this is a photograph of one of the side yards uh, for this property. And um, I'll speak a little bit more about this in a moment, but um, we, I'll speak about this when we get to the recommendation piece. But uh, staff thinks that uh, here uh, at this side, lar 
side yard location, it could be a possibility for the petitioner to relocate the shed. Um, and if that, if that, if he did that, it would eliminate the need for the variances. Um, on the left is the petitioner's letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals. On the right is the site plan that was submitted. Uh, in terms of a recommendation, planning staff recommends um, a denial that we deny this variance request, um, deny the design standards variance to the buildable area or 15% slope standard in chapter 804 of the Monroe County Zoning Ordinance. Um, and once again, we do think that an alternative location um, at, at the side of the house would be a better possibility. And uh, regarding VAR-21-42B, um, staff recommends denying the design standards variance to the sinkhole conservancy area standards, which are in chapter 802. Um, and finally, I just wanted to um, show this contour map, which gives, I think, a little bit more um, better of an illustration. So this uh, highlighted um, contour here is the 812 contour. Um, and we determined that that is the closed contour that we are um, considering the rim of the sinkhole. Um, so it's from this contour uh, 50 feet away, that, that is the um, goal would be to locate the shed 50 feet from this closed contour. Um, and so, although we don't know exactly how much in violation the proposed location of the shed is, we do know that it isn't meeting the 50 foot setback. Um, and so with that, um, I will take any questions. Does the board have any questions for Rebecca? Bernie? I have a question. Oh, sorry, Bernie, go ahead. You can go. You can okay. go, Vicki. <laughs> I was just going to ask, is this in a, a subdivision that would have a homeowners association that he'd also have to go before them to put a shed in? Um, I, I might defer that question to the petitioner. Um, I, I don't know about an HOA. I do know that he's in the platted um, subdivision. Okay, I'll ask. No, that's, that's a no. Okay. okay. That, that is, thank you, Corey. Bernie, did you have a question for Rebecca? Yeah, Rebecca, a couple things. One, um, you have a photo of where you, you suggest, or staff, excuse me, staff suggests that, yeah. What is that white thing? Is that just a, is that just a, a landscaping rock or something in, on, down along that grass line? I think it's a tree stump. Um, oh, okay. Once again, uh, the petitioner can confirm that, but I think it's okay. a tree stump. Okay, and then, okay, so is that, help me out here, is that on the, which side of the house is that on? Direction. That is on the east side of the house. Okay. So what how how close to the property line is the house to the west? On the west side, roughly. I mean, is it is it does it appear it's, that the, it's about pretty on the tight. step back? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's tight. Let me flip back to the site plan. Oops, I'm sorry, I went the wrong way. Um, yeah, so you can see, so the proposed okay. shed lines right up with the um, existing single family residence. So on the west side, it's pretty tight. Currently. Correct. So put your arrow, could you put your cursor back where you just had it? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll go to the, so go to your right. Keep going. Is that where you propose the shed? Um, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff from the board? I have a quick question. Uh, Rebecca, with that slide up, can you point to approximately where the 50 feet would begin? Because I can see the house. I can see the street. I can see the proposed. Oh. Now I can see the proposed Sorry. shed. Can you 
point approximately to where the 50 foot setback would begin? Because you said that's at the very top ridge, correct? Yeah, so um, I think the, the scales are different between that contour map I showed you mm -hmm. um, and this, obviously. But if we trace the, um, if we look here at the contour lines, it was the 812. And I'm really sorry, I cannot read these numbers <laughs> um, in, this, in this view. But yeah, it's, uh, I think this one is the 812 right here. So it's pretty, um, I'm not sure, is that 812? Anyone, can anyone read that beyond? It is, but I don't okay, think it's yeah. closed, but it's, it's around there where your cursor is, it looks like. Yeah. So um, Skip, hopefully I didn't confuse matters, but what I was trying to say is that while we don't have an exact um, measurement of how much in violation the proposed shed is, we just know that it is within the 50 foot um, of the rim. It doesn't look to me like they've got any buildable space other than the side of that house then. And it also looks to me as if that deck potentially encroaches on there. You're but right. Their, um, their site has uh, um, quite a few constraints related to the slope and the sinkhole. Um, and um, regarding the potential for the shed to be located on the right, um, it would certainly, or I guess I should say on the east side, um, it would certainly pinch down um, that, that area of the property and I guess you know, he, um, the petitioner would have to likely reorient the shed uh, so that the narrower part of the shed is parallel to Jordan Court so that he maxima or, you know, doesn't violate the side yard setback. And I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but I've got a quick question regarding, explain to me, in, in layman's terms, the point of that 50 foot setback and how damaging that would be for what looks to be like a, just a plain old utility shed. Mm -hmm. um, well, I- Because you're opposing know. this, right? You're, 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 your recommendation is denial. Yeah, yeah, we are recommending denial, um, you know, because if we measure this up against the ordinance, the ordinance says do not put or construct anything within 50 foot of the rim of a sinkhole. Um, so, that, you know, we're looking at that and applying that. Is there a threat that is the, the, is the belief that within 50 foot of there, there's, it's threatened to come down? Yeah, I would I would think now, Larry, if you're still on, um, you can weigh in, but I'm I'm assuming that is the purpose of the ordinance is to protect and buffer the sinkhole um, so that, you know, there is no jeopardy or le less jeopardy of something, you know, falling in and collapsing if the sinkhole gets bigger. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, it, it is a buffer. And the idea is that we do not want disturbance within that buffer. Um, we allow people to do certain landscaping and so on within the buffer. Uh, we do not allow structures. Uh, I'm not so certain. It's not, we do not have the sea calls that they have in Florida where houses and neighborhoods disappear. Uh, but it's not unknown for structures to uh, be affected by being close to a sinkhole rim uh, in our jurisdiction as well. But Larry, is it, I'm, I'm sorry problem. to interrupt, but is it not true that the disturbance would have already happened because the looks like the concrete poles or our uh, 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 posts are already in the ground? Is that not right? Well, the sinkhole is a, a dynamic situation, OK? So you really can't say that, okay, so we've already done the disturbance, it's done. Uh, because there, there could be additional work done around it. I mean, obviously you would need to access the shed somehow. Um, okay. 
Does that answer your question, Skip? Yeah, I think I'm sold. Thanks. Okay. Is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Uh, yes, I'm here and I, yes, I would like to speak again. Okay, sir. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name. Corey Kennington, the owner of the property. Okay, sir. Proceed, please. Um, regarding the 50 feet, no one really knows, has been able to actually pinpoint exactly where it is, but if you go by that 812 line, my house isn't even 50 feet from that. And on the side yard, that would also not be 50 feet from that 812. Um, the reason I'm trying to put it back where I am is because, as Skip pointed out, there's really nowhere else to put it unless I want it in my front yard. Because on the side there, although that looks like a pretty decent sized space, more than half of that is actually my neighbor's property. So there's actually less than 13, there's about 13 feet between my house and my property line there. And uh, according to Rebecca, she said my setback is eight to 12 feet from the property line, even right there. And the problem why I can't build it there is partly because all of my drainage, if you look at the picture that's showing right now, all of the drainage from both stories of my house all go down that little gully to drain back to the back of the property. So you'd be putting a shed right where all of the drainage for your entire property is going. So everything from my front yard is all sheds down through that area, including all the stuff that's captured on top of my house. That's the main drainage for the area. Whereas where I'm proposing putting it in the back is out of the way. I'm already back there every week to cut the grass. So it's not like I'm disturbing anything more than it already is going to be besides just putting the shed there. And regarding property debt or property loss, it's a sh it's a garden shed. It's not like you're housing people there. So even if you know the world opened up and sucked in that shed, you know it's not a it's not a huge loss there. And the other thing is the prop the sinkhole is fairly far back, but yet no one can tell me exactly where and or where the sinkhole is. So it's really a not defined rules that we're going by here. Um, but I, I mean, that's, that's the best location uh, for this shed proposed shed. I mean, there's no other real spot to put it. If you're talking, I mean, maybe you could put like a one foot wide storage container there on the side, if that's what, you know, if that's the only thing you could do, but uh, that map there is kind of skewed. If you see how the prop, uh, how the property line is drawn on that aerial map, that to the left there, that line goes right over my, right through my garage. So it's kind of skewed. So although it looks like I have a lot of land over there on this picture, that's not really true. That's over half of that is my neighbor's property. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that's all I have to say. Unless my wife wants to say something, my wife is also here. Does anybody have any questions for the petitioner? Bernie? Yeah, I've just got a couple. So uh, the so tell me about the construction. Uh, is it Mr. Kennington? Is that the right pronunci pronunciation? Yeah. So uh, Jackie or uh, Rachel, could you go back to the, the picture that shows the piers for the shed there you go so the construction you're gonna are you gonna just mount uh, base plates on those concrete piers and then bring them up with a four by four and on the front side it'll be the door will be at ground level and then at the back side you'll just you'll just have floor joists and then it'll just come to the ground and it'll be elevated on the back and at ground level on the front. Is that, is, am I assuming that properly? Yes. Yeah, so like the front is going to be like where the door is as at the front to make it easily to ex pull my lawnmower in and out. And the back is going to be up on six by sixes and they're all going to be tied with like five eighths inch drilled in rebar and, or not rebar, all thread mounted in there with uh, Simpson ties. So six by sixes. Yes. And, and it will be off the ground in the back on six by sixes. Okay, and then you're not going to have you're not pouring a concrete slab, or you're not you're you're basically going to have a 
an elevated wood floor. Is that is that correct? That's correct. It's going to be a, a just about ground level, a little bit off ground level because I didn't want to disturb any drainage that did happen. So any drainage is still going to be able to pass underneath the shed that is there. So it is going to be off the ground in the front just a little bit enough to let watershed go through there. But the back is going to be elevated. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I notice on the deck, it's the same type of you've got the did you build the home or did somebody else build the home no i bought the home i just okay. refat re i just replaced a couple of the boards on the deck and refinished it last year but the deck was there when i bought it looks great okay so it looks like the same the same type of construction was done yes with the, deck. The, Correct. the the practical difficulty that i'm that i'm kind of seeing right now is a couple things one you know a person has to have places to store things and in a in a residential home a storage shed is something that's reasonable and access to the back of your home for repairs if somebody's hurt for for all types of different things is necessary and if if while staff has picked out a, a location that may work on the east side i think that a building there would impede the ability to come to the back of the house for uh, for anything that's that either either semi necessary or very necessary. So I think that the I, I can see how the the shed on the east side wouldn't necessarily be uh, useful to the home to, to 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 the use of the house. Uh, and then I also like the fact if it were if it were me to have the shed in the back and that way I would have less concerns maybe with security and people getting in my stuff. And an eyesore in the neighborhood because I do have a neighbor that pulls her tractor back to her yard right there and putting anything on that side there would impede her ability to do that because she has stumps on her yard there. Yeah, I, I, I'm not too concerned about how it looks, but I, I, if you are, I understand and I can respect that. Yeah. So, so the one comment I want to make sure you understand: I don't need, as a commissioner or a BZA member, to know exactly where the encroachment is, based on what the 50 foot is. But uh, staff has done a very good job uh, explaining what the situation is. Apparently, you agree, but it's your burden to prove if they're incorrect that 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 the that, that you're not encroaching or what that encroachment is if it makes a difference so uh just suggesting that that's probably tread lightly on that one because you know it, there there are ways that that can be figured and they're they're they're, they're not inexpensive to do so uh that that answers my questions thank you very much for for indulging me to to ask ask a few things of you Anyone else have any questions for the petitioner? Any board uh, members? I had a question for Rebecca, just to clarify. This shed will not be in the uh, platted conservancy easement. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So to verify that, there is a platted conservancy easement at the back of this lot for the sinkhole that that uh, designates an area where there can be no disturbance at all, uh, but it's somewhat. Uh, distant from this particular shed, but the shed is still in the 50 foot area that does not include from the sinkhole rim. Thanks, Larry, that's very helpful. Okay, any further questions for the petitioner? Would anyone else here like to speak on behalf of this petition? Seeing none, is there anyone here that would like to speak against this petition? Seeing none, uh, would the um, board member be ready to make a uh, motion? I can make a motion. Yes, please, Bernie. <clears throat> In the matter of, uh, I'm gonna do both of these together. Mary Beth, is that okay with you? works yes okay in the matter of uh var-21-42a uh kensington karst and sinkhole development standards variance to chapter 829 
and VAR-21-42B, dash dash Kennington buildable area, parentheses, 15% slope, variance to chapter 804. I move that we approve the variances based on uh, findings of fact, staff report, and I do believe that practical difficulties have been met. I will second. Hey, Larry, you want to call the roll? Yes, the uh, the roll vote is on uh, petitions number BR 21-42A and 42B respectively. The <laughs> Kennington Cars Sinkhole and Development Standards Variance Chapter 829 and the Kennington Buildable Area 15% Slope Variance to Chapter 804. A vote uh, a yes vote is a vote to approve both variances uh, based upon the uh, staff report with an amended finding of practical difficulties in regard to utilizing uh, the lot. Uh, again, a vote, yes vote is vote to approve based on a finding of practical difficulty, both variances. Uh, Skip Daly? Yay. Mary Beth Kismarczyk? Yes. Vicki Sorensen? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Both variances are approved by a 4 0 vote. Okay. Next up, we have case number VAR 21 47, and that is true. All right. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. So this is the Allen minimum lot size variance, Chapter 804. Located at 9385 South Harrodsburg Road. Uh, it's in Clear Creek Township, Section 29, and it's on a uh, 0.5 acre parcel. So the petitioner, uh, a little bit of summary here. The petitioner applied for a residential building permit in April 2021 to remodel 850 square feet of the existing 956 square foot single family residence on this property. Um, and then a building permit and improvement location permit were issued for that remodel. Um, then in uh, June of 2021, uh, the petitioner came back and applied for a second uh, residential building permit to construct a bathroom addition to the existing single family residence. Uh, that addition uh, is approximately 144 square feet. Um, during the planning department review stage, um, planning staff notified the petitioner that they would need to request a minimum lot size variance uh, based upon the fact that this property is less than the one acre minimum lot size for its zoning district, which is uh, a state residential. Um, so um, <clears throat> other items on this uh, of note for this petition are that it is on sewer. Um, here's the location map and the slope map. Um, you'll note that there is some steep slopes in the area, but the uh, the addition of the bathroom will be going into the southeast corner of the existing residence on the property. Here's some site photographs of the driveway cut on South Harrodsburg Road. Next slide. Um, here is the home um, and the front of it, and then the back where the um, proposed bathroom addition will go. You can see that cut out in the ground there. Other pictures of the property, um, just a few more angles of where the bathroom addition where it will go. Um, this picture on the left is the existing detached garage that is on this property. Uh, it's referenced in the site plan as well. Um, and then just right adjacent to it is um, a separate property that has some structures on it. Um, it is unknown to the planning department uh, what the structures for the other property are used for um, or just this ex uh, existing uh, detached garage. It's most likely storage for the current owners. All right, so here we have the um, letter to the Board of Zoning Appeals from the petitioner, as well as the confirmation that this property is on sewer. Here is the site plan. And there's another one on the next page, but you'll note the existing garage um, and then also their uh, proposed addition of the bathroom to that southeast section of the house. All right, so overall planning staff recommends approval of the minimum lot size variance chapter 804, citing that any new development or expansion on the property would first require a minimum lot size variance based upon its 
uh, current um, lot size. I will now take any questions. Does the board have any questions for Drew? Seeing none, is the petitioner here and would they like to speak? Uh, Jason McCauley, present on behalf of the petitioner. Okay, uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, uh, go ahead and proceed, sir. I, I welcome any board questions. I, there's actually nothing, Drew did a fantastic job. All right, well, thank you. And any, does the board have questions for Mr. McCauley? I don't. Nope. Okay, is there anyone else here that would like to speak on behalf of this petition? Anyone here that would like to speak in opposition to this petition? Seeing none, uh, would one of the board members like to make a motion, please? I can. Thank you, Vicki. Oh. All right. On case number VAR-21-47 uh, at 9385 South Harrisburg Road, I, rec I move to approve the minimum lot size variance from chapter 804 with the recommendation motion condition of any new development expansion on this property. Um, would first re request a minimum lot size variance. I'll second the motion. Second. Did you hear that, Mary Beth? Yes. Larry, you want to recall roll? I sure will. I want to make sure I was, un I was unmuted. Uh, the vote is on variance number 21-47, the Allen minimum lot size variance, the chapter 804 for the real estate located at 9385 South Harrisburg Road. The motion is to approve the lot size variance based upon the findings and with uh, and, and the staff report. Uh, Bernie Garitas? Yes. Gip Daly? Yeah, yay. Sorry, te technical difficulty, yay. <laughs> Very back to smart check. Yes. Vicki Sorensen. Yes. Uh, the variance is approved by a four to zero vote. Okay, thank you and you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Is there anything else we need to address this evening? Any reports or anything? No? I don't believe I have any uh, announcements. All right. Nothing from legal. Nothing from legal, all right. Well, then I move we adjourn this meeting. Thanks, Second. everybody. Okay. Thank you. Nice job, you. staff. Have a good evening. Nice to see you all. And uh, hopefully we'll be together again Sunday. <laughs>